it took me a long time to really realize how much I appreciated my parents for being exactly the way they were when I grew up, which I didn't understand. Like, in certain things, you know, certain things, you know, it's a whole other video. I still kind of feel the way I feel about them. They feel the way they feel about it. And we may not come to an understanding about it, but there's a line of respect now more than ever. And we're just able to communicate, I guess, like, you know, as adults. Good morning, you guys, or whatever time it is, wherever you are. It's morning here and I'm loving this natural sunlight. I love this time of day, like the sunlight just like, yeah, it's just beautiful in the room. I don't mind my um, wrinkled shirt. I'm just in the house chilling. Um, but I had this really strong urge to make this video about the disconnect that is often experienced between Habesha children and their parents. And this is obviously a generalization. It's not going to apply to everybody because everybody may not have the same issues or a uh, difference in understandings with their parents. But from the way that I grew up and a lot of Habishas that I knew that grew up in Western civilization, I guess, with their parents being more traditional, we've had a lot of these same differences, you know, growing up and difference in understandings. And so this is something that of course, I expect Habisha children to watch, to relate to, but also I think it's important to watch it with your parents so that you guys can understand each other's points of view. So I'm not a parent yet, but I can say that I have an understanding from the, the child point of view when I was younger and I didn't understand my parents um, and now as an adult just understanding them and understanding where they where they were coming from with their logic versus mine and obviously it starts with a difference of environment growing up differently so for example i was born in the states <clears throat> i was raised in the states if you were born in the states canada europe australia i don't know wherever else and your parents are habisha and I mean, like, traditional, you know what I'm talking about when I say they have a shit, like, not generations down and they, you know, like, they have a shit, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you'll likely experience a lot of differences between cultural norms and what is traditional and what's around your environment and what's, what's kind of, like, a norm to you based off of outside of your household. And so it was... I think like extremely difficult for me because I didn't grow up in an area in the States where there was a Habisha community. Like for the major for the majority of my childhood, since I was nine years old, we lived in Delaware. And in Delaware, like I can count on my hand, literally one hand, how many Habisha families I came across since I lived there. And it definitely wasn't a community of us either. So the closest like family members that we had uh to us growing up for holidays and so for those types of festivities we would go to either like the dmv like washington dc virginia maryland which was two hours away um or we would go to north jersey which is another two hours away and so it wasn't like a every weekend type of thing we weren't in those communities like heavy it would just be like weddings a ritual and festival you know like things of that nature so it wasn't heavy it wasn't like the everyday and because of that my surroundings like the people that i grew up with they their parents weren't my parents friends you know like they knew each other because of us the kids but they it wasn't that type of community where everybody was accepting and so when it came to certain differences like not being able to sleep over friend's house no matter how long you've known them <laughs> or whatever the case may be and I will say my parents were a little bit more lenient than the parents that of like cousins or like when we would go visit in Virginia and they really have a tight-knit like Habisha Muslim community like it was easier I think for them to tell their kids like oh no you're not doing this and you obviously see that your cousins and friends that's in the same Quran school as you don't do it either but it was different with us because it was just us. 
it was we were the only like different ones and we were the only ones that couldn't participate in the same type of things as our friends and when you're a child that's very confusing and from the parent point of view it's your prerogative however you want to raise your child or you know telling them no for certain things but it's it gives them a or i'll say us because it made me feel like my parents didn't trust me um and i felt like my friends parents trusted them because they allowed them to do certain things that like my parents just wouldn't let me do and so it, in my mind it was like okay it must be a me thing something it, they have an issue with me because my friends parents let them do it and that's just kind of like what i was thinking in my head not knowing any better being young and just seeing it for what it that's what it was to me and so i think that like i said you can raise your children however you want to but it's good to have open dialogue with them and just explain to them don't just tell them like if when they ask me you're like well you know why not don't just tell them because that's the way it is and that's it because there's no understanding there like a child's not going to understand a child's going to make up in their mind and have these somewhat psychological issues in the like in the long run because they're not understanding what the issue is between them and their parents and why other people have open relationships with their parents where they can talk about things or you know just like things of that nature and like I said I'm not trying to tell anybody how to raise their children but it it will make for a better relationship between you and your children if you're more open about things you know explain to them what it's like when you grew up where you grew up the climate of how it is how it's different here <clears throat> excuse me and at least give them like some sense of understanding and what i realized obviously after i grew up was that that's a big deal like i don't have children yet but it is a big deal to let your children spend the night at somebody's house that you don't know like let's be real like to me when i was younger like i said everybody else was doing this so i was like well why are you the only ones like not with the program like do you want me to be ostracized do you want me to be the only do you want me to not have friends like i used to ask questions like that because it's how i felt I'm like why and how come they can come over here but i can't go over there but i didn't understand why my mom would ask me questions like who does your friend live with is it their mom is it their dad is it do they have a brother do they have an uncle like those types of questions i wasn't getting it then because i just wasn't i wasn't mature enough then to understand it and to understand that they care for you and they don't want you to end up being in messed up situations and as an adult now looking back at how many times in america not even just heard of stories on tv but no like personally no people who have been inappropriately like touched and abused as children in those same type of instances and what your parents obviously want to do is protect you and you don't have to be have a parent for that like parents in general they want to protect their children and sometimes they just go full throttle and it makes you feel like they don't trust you but in reality it's just they're trying to protect you and a lot of times there's miscommunication between or or a lack of communication i'll say that and a lack of understanding between a parent and a child the parent is trying to protect their child but there's also a lack of affection within the Habisha community, or maybe it was just us growing up, but you don't really do the whole, okay, I love you thing. Like, no, I started that in my family <laughs> because that's just how I am. And I'm just an emotional person. So I like to express how I feel. And um, I remember the first time I like was on the phone with my mom when I was in college, because I was talking to my friends and I was like, noticing that when they got the phone they would be like okay love you love you bye and i'd be like wow do you guys always say that and they're like yeah and i'm like okay we don't and they're like really and i'm like yeah watch this so i like call my mom and put her on speaker and we got a phone and i'd be like okay love you mom and then she like what and then like my friends would be like what like why is she react like that and then she'd be like okay like what am i about to die it like <laughs> she'll say something like that and i'm just like no I'm just telling you that I love you like what's wrong with that and then she'll be like okay like love you too but it'll be awkward and it was awkward for a long time even in person like she'll still be like am I about to die like what and it's just 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 things like that there's just cultural differences and like like I said to a child who doesn't know any better it might make you feel like your parents don't love you in that like you know because they don't affectionately say it, it depends on 
your love language and how, you know, if affection matters more to you or if doing matters more. Because even though my parents were the I love you, give you a hug and kiss type, they still were the biggest supporters of me and to this day still are like they were always there for me whenever I needed them to be. And they didn't show me affection, but they showed me that they got my back basically and so it's just different ways of communication and as a parent you can't expect your, your child who sees different than that to just understand that you know what I mean like that this is not something that's just going to come to them and if it does then god bless <laughs> your relationship that's wonderful but for a lot of times it doesn't and it causes a division between you and the child you don't understand them they don't understand you you're living in an area where you I mean <clears throat> it's just different environments and it's just something to keep in mind because it took me until literally like I'm, I'm 24 now last year I've been going through like spiritual awakening and just realizing things about my upbringing and it took me a long time to really realize how much I appreciated my parents for being exactly the way they were when I grew up which uh, I didn't understand like and certain things, you know, certain things, you know, it's a whole other video. I still kind of feel the way I feel about them. They feel the way they feel about it. And we may not come to an understanding about it. But there's a line of respect now um, more than ever. And we're just able to communicate, I guess, like, you know, as adults. And now I know, like, you know, I can completely understand and see the differences. I think the only thing that I would say would be different on my end when I become a parent is that I may still be as protective as they were but I'm going to keep an open dialogue you know and just kind of let them know like well this is why it's because I care about you you know like don't be afraid to tell them I love you I care about you and this is why I'm doing this not there's a lot of like hardcore habish parents you know they're just like they have this very very strong attitude and it's because it's what they've seen growing up and that's how things are. And to a child, it may make them feel like you just don't, I don't know, like there's a lack of affection or there's a lack of care when in actuality, it's all care. It's all out of love. And it's just different ways of understanding each other or pretty much like that's all I'm trying to say. But I just wanted to get that off my chest because I feel like that's something that I struggled with for a long time, long time growing up. And even into my like early adulthood, like I just wasn't understanding certain things. It wasn't coming to me. It's because I grew up in an area where what happened in my household like was not the norm in my area. And so I was different in that sense. And I was trying to figure out why we were so different and why there was a lack of affection and why, you know, it was just no understanding. And I'm like, what is this? Like, why is it this way? But looking back at it, like, Everything that they did was out of love and, and still to this day, and I just can't express how much I appreciate my parents for the way that they raised me and how much they've supported me even when I literally drove them crazy. Like, yeah, and you know how hobbish your parents are when you embarrass them. Like, you know how that goes. And I feel like I put, through, I put my parents through a lot. I really have. And I'm owning up to it. And um, I, I'm sure they have made it to the end of this video. But I just want you guys to know that. It's like. <laughs> I just want you guys to know how much I love you. I'll say it. I love you guys. And I appreciate you guys so much. And thank you for being you. And for making me who I am today. Because I love the person that I've grown to be. And the disciplines that I have and thank you and i hope this helps to any habish children who feel like they have a disconnect with their parents um because of maybe different environments or you know whatever the reason may be it's communication makes such a difference um in relationships with people in general and sometimes you just have to understand that people don't communicate the same as you even if they do feel the same way as you and vice versa parents it's on you too to make an effort because you have to understand that children are not going to just figure things out like that. You know, you being the adult, you should kind of like know that you have to, with kids, like don't 
don't ease up on them, but at the same time, like, understand that they don't always understand what's going on until years later and you just you never know what's going to happen so it's good to keep a good relationship with your children for as long as you can as soon as you can so i hope that was helpful and this isn't just for high people obviously i think it's just for parenting in general and for children who um are first generation western I usually say first generation American, but you know, it's not just Americans watching this. So yeah, growing up somewhere else, it's just, it's just different from traditional norms all in all. But anyways, I'm going to stop talking because I talk, <laughs> I see like talking, talking, talking. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and like, if you like this video and whatever else people say at the, <laughs> the end of their videos. Okay. Bye.